Hello everyone, welcome to Tutorials Point. In this video, we are going to talk about the topic Nomenclature. So we have already in our previous videos talked about biodiversity which means the occurrence of wide variety of life forms on earth. We have also talked about the presence of 1.7 to 1.8 million species. So you can understand there are number of species. So in order to identify them, we need to name them. So this process of naming an organism is known as nomenclature. Now nomenclature can be of two types. The first type is vernacular nomenclature which is nothing but the common names given to any type of organism. Now these are the names mostly which are regional based or a language based. Now these vernacular names are mostly uninomial that means it has got a single word. These vernacular names have got a lot of disadvantages. What are those? First of all the vernacular names uh, all organisms cannot occur in a particular area. So we cannot expect to find 1.8 million species in a particular area. Now vernacular names cannot be used for communication in the scientific world. For example, if we consider mango in some Indian local language. So this language may not be understood by scientists remaining in the other part of the world. So it's a very big disadvantage. The third point is some common names in the vernacular names are incorrect. For example, jellyfish, silverfish, these are called fishes, but actually they belong to a different phyla and share very less number of similarities with true fishes. Now, in order to overcome the uh, disadvantages we have talked about in vernacular names, scientist Carolus Linnaeus he devised the binomial system of naming. According to this binomial nomenclature system, all organisms are given a single particular name which is known as the scientific name. Now this name consists of two components. The first component is known as the genetic name and the second component is known as the species name. Now Linus's findings were collaborated in the book which is known as Species Plantarum which is specifically for plants and the next its 10th version came out which is known as the Systema Naturae which was for specifically for animals and it was published in the year 1758. Now there are certain codes for binomial nomenclature. Some of the organizations, international organizations which deal this uh, rules for binomial nomenclature and they, they try to name the organisms. Now the first is the International Code for Botanical Nomenclature ICBN and International Code for Nomenclature of Cultivated Plants ICNCP. These two are responsible for naming any plant. For animals, International Code for Zoological Nomenclature ICZN. International Code for Bacteriological Nomenclature, you can understand this organization names bacteria. Similarly, for virus, it is International Code for Viral Nomenclature that is ICVN. Now, if you are trying to name something universally, there must be some specific rules. So, we mostly follow these four rules. First of all, the biological names or the scientific names we are trying to give is mostly derived from Latin words and they are italicized. As you can see, it's written over here. Now, the first word represents the biological name of the biological represents the genus or the genetic name. And the second name represents or the second component represents the specific epithet or the species name. Now, whenever we are writing it down on some paper, then we have to underline these genetic name and the specific name separately. And when it is computerized or printed material, then it has to be italicized that is written in italics font. Now, the fourth uh, uh, rule is the word for the genetic name, the first letter of the genetic name must be in capitals as you can see over here and, and the rest of the letters in the whole scientific name will be in small letter. Let's take an example. We will take an example of mango which is known as Mangifera indica. You can see it is italicized because we are seeing it in some computerized mode. So if we write it down in paper, we have to underline this separately, right? Now we can also see that the first letter or the first alphabet has been capitalized. Now the very important thing is authority. Now every organism or every species have been somewhat discovered or described by some scientists. Now the scientists have been given the privilege to include their name at the end of the scientific name. For example, mango was first described by the scientist Linnaeus. So his name is written as Mangifera indica L-I-N-N -N, in abbreviated form. Now let us talk about classification. So we have discussed about the wide variety of organisms. Now think that how can we classify or how can we study all these organisms? So in order to study all these organisms, we need to group them or classify them. 
so arrangement of organisms into groups based on some easily observable characters characters which we can easily find mostly morphological characters so this process is known as classification and each of these categories or rank is known as taxa now the branch of science which actually deals with the principles and procedures of identifying these organisms naming these organisms and then classifying these organisms into group is known as taxonomy so in this video we have talked about nomenclature we have talked about the two different types of nomenclature that is vernacular and binomial nomenclature we have talked about some of the codes for binomial nomenclature we have also discovered discussed some of the uh, important rules we must follow to name something scientifically and we have also talked about the need for classification i hope you have understood this video and you have enjoyed this video thank you